Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. To the organizers of uh, today's event, thank you very much for inviting Alsif Hospital to be a success, to be part of this success. My name is Johnny Herson Villoria. I am the Quality and Prison Safety Officer of Alsif Hospital. And as we all know, since we are talking about VTE since this morning, VTE is a condition that occurs when a blood clot forms in a vein. Um, statistics from the World Health Organization and uh, CDC, we have nine, 900,000 uh, VTE each year in the United States. And of course, the risk factors, VTE is uh, highest after major surgery. Major surgery or including um, periods of infection and uh, um, inflammation. Symptoms, swelling, redness, and pain are some of the symptoms of DVT. A pulmonary embolism can cause sudden chest pain and shortness of breath. In the United States, as uh, Dr. Noof discussed this morning, we have the same uh, statistics. Um, the precise number of people affected by um, the vein thrombosis or DVT and pulmonary, emboli and pulmonary embolism is unknown although as many as 900 people could be affected each year in the United States. Sudden death is a first symptom in uh, about one quarter or 25% of uh, people who, who have a pulmonary embolism. Estimated suggest that 60,000 to 100,000 Americans die of DVT or PE every year. And of course, 33% among people who had uh, have DVD, one-third of that will have long-term complications such as swelling, pain, discoloration, and uh, scaling in the affected limb. And of course, one-third or 33% of people with DVD will have recurrence within 10 years. As estimated, annual incidence rates of VTE among people range from 104 to 183 per 100,000 persons year, rates that uh, are similar to that of the stroke. VTE is predominantly a disease of older age and is rare prior to the late adolescence. Incidence rates increase markedly with age for men and women and for DVT and PE. The overall age adjusted annual incidence rate is higher for men than for women. So today, ladies and gentlemen, I will be showing and I will be discussing um, our KPIs and uh, our hospital data uh, that is important to show as we talk about DVT and how we in Alsif Hospital are um, doing in preventing the development of VTE to our clients. This data includes the five years comparison for total number of patients admissions, the total number of operations per year, the total number of patients on VTE prophylaxis, the percentage of patients on VTE prophylaxis based on the criteria of, uh, for VTE as per the total number of operations and number of VTE clients. Statistics 1 shows that the total number of inpatients admission for the last five years, of which there is a dramatic increase of 4,000 4, admissions in 2021 compared from 2018, and patients admissions doubled from more than 10,000 from 2018 to 20,000 last year, 2022. Uh, statistics 2 shows the total admissions out of which the total number of patients for operation. 73% of the total patients um, of uh, 2018 are admitted for operations and uh, it increases to 77% on 2021. And there was 24% decrease last year, 2022, and that leaves 53% of patients for operation. So. Uh, with these figures of uh, patient admission, how are we categorizing our clients if they are at risk for VTE or not? So we have an existing uh, assessment tool to identify who are those risks and candidate for VTE prophylaxis. So uh, we have the VTE risk assessment form in which clients will be assessed and categorized as low, moderate, or um, high risk for VTE. Clients considered on low risk includes ambulatory medical patients for treatment and some minor procedure without VTE um, risk factors. Moderate risk includes general surgeries and bariatric surgery, open gynecological surgery, 
um, critical patients such as uh, high BMI, medical patients with the decrease in ambulation more than 72 hours, and multiple risk factor. High risk includes most major surgeries, such as total hip replacement, total knee replacement, spinal cord injury, and major surgeries. Here in this sample, uh, I'm showing to you our KPI of 2022 in one of our floors, medical surgical floor, wherein uh, we are monitoring the total monthly census of uh, admission, uh, and out of that, we are recording the total number of patients with VTE prophylaxis. So like for, uh, like for instance, on uh, February, we have uh, 140 patients admitted, and 61 out of that 140 is on VTE prophylaxis. So this KPI we are keeping and collecting as part of our quality improvement data. Statistics 3 shows the total number of patients for operation versus patients on VTE prophylaxis. So 3,220 uh, 3, of the total 7,839 admitted for operations are patients on VTE prophylaxis. So it increases to 4,895 on 2021, and it doubled last year, 2022. That leaves 9,131 from the total 10,000. 551 patients admitted for operation. Statistics number four shows the percentage of patients on VTE prophylaxis out of the total percentage of patients for operation. So uh, from 30% of the year 2018, it slightly increased for 2% on 2019 of 32%, decreased to 30% on 2022, and then again increased to 35 um, um, on 2021, and last year, out of 53% of the patients for operation, 46 out of that are patients on VTE prophylaxis. Um, here in this uh, slide, it shows the percentage of patients on VTE prophylaxis and the number of VTE cases. So we recorded um, three cases of VTE on 2000. 18, one case on 2019, and two cases by 2022, and zero cases for the last two years. So this leaves us total six recorded VTE for the last five years. Five out of these VTE clients were medically ill patients. They were medically patients falls under the moderate and high risk uh, to develop VTE. The other one client recorded develops VTE due to immobilization post-operatively, and the client had history of previous VTE one year before the admission to Alsif Hospital. And the client uh, um, was well managed by the healthcare team before his discharge. So what are we uh, have, what are we doing in Alsif Hospital to keep our clients safe and free from these fatal complications of VTE? and to achieve meaningful improvement in VTE um, prevention. So we have our strategies uh, adopted and implemented a guide that targets these failures mo uh, the, uh, this failure modes in the process of uh, preventing VTE in the inpatient setting and provides improvement teams with uh, field-tested strategies and tools to enhance their enhances of, uh, uh, to enhance their chances of Success. So several um, essential elements are needed to achieve meaningful um, improvement in VTE prevention. So this includes, of course, empowered inter interdisciplinary healthcare team members, um, supportive management and leaders. We have uh, a standardized process and procedures. We are maintaining, mo we are maintaining and monitor. Uh, and, and of course, measuring the VTE process and outcomes, a strict implementation of hospital policies and procedures and protocols, timely and, reg and regular educational sessions for the healthcare team, including um, on site education for the healthcare providers, clients, and of course, the families. And guidelines for VTE's prevention are numerous and do not always agree. And, and the complexity of the inpatient setting and the variability of patients makes implementation of evidence-based guidelines challenging. So the ALSIF Hospital VTE prophylaxis protocol particularly focuses on the implications for implementation. It then breaks down the steps into practice into form of a VTE 
protocol. So the VTE um, protocol includes VTE risk assessment. We have uh, high, moderate, and low. And of course, it includes the contraindications there uh, for prophylaxis, like for example, the patient is uh, having an active bleeding. So the VTE protocol on clinical decision support evaluates are done during the crucial juncture of care such as upon admission to the hospital and a transfer to different levels of care and post-operative care. So we have here an example of our uh, VTE risk assessment tool. Uh, uh, one patient admitted for morbid obesity and another patient is uh, admitted for um, right knee osteoarthritis. So this sample shows uh, um, how we are using the VTE risk assessment tool in which our healthcare providers focus on the identification of risks and uh, suitable prophylaxis as per the guidelines. So in this uh, um, tool, accurate and complete client's information and history are crucial at this moment. So the healthcare providers will identify and decide on which prophylaxis are um, to be carried out. So part of our strategies in monitoring the proper implementation of VTE is to go after the doctor's order. So our healthcare team had selected auditors to check our clients daily to identify clients at risk for VTE and to check and monitor the compliance of our doctors um, and, and the whole healthcare team to make sure that our clients um, are safe and monitored to prevent the development of VTE prophylaxis. We have a team that, aside from the nurses who are um, carrying out in the doctor's order, we have an, a specific auditors or a team who will go after the doctor's order. They will check how many patients are at risk for VTE and are these doctors are ordering for VTE, uh, VTE prophylaxis. Another integral part is, of course, a continuous education. Uh, to prevent uh, the complication of VTE, uh, uh, this is very important, um, the, the proper education and awareness. So continuous education are done to all healthcare team that includes our physicians, nurses, and other interdisciplinary team members. So we are conducting mandatory session about VTE prophylaxis, its early signs, uh, importance of early ambulation and prevention of VTE. And this kind of educational sessions are done quarterly or as per demand. One important point here is the on-site or what we call the bedside education with our clients and family members are also important. As this purpose is to gain cooperation from the clients and the family. Uh, we, we have to accept that uh, aside from educating the clients, we have to also educate our um, the family members of the clients because um, we have to involve them to the total care of our clients. That is, of course, to prevent the VTE. Um, education to the client and family includes the importance of early ambulation to prevent DVT or pulmonary embolism, compliance to medication regimen like uh, um, coughing and deep breathing, um, coughing and deep breathing exercises is also important as part of the education and other post-operative um, teaching. We are also documenting the feedback from the clients after giving the education if they understood the teaching or not, or if we need to make more improvement. In conclusion, we uh, in Alsif Hospital to prevent okay, um, the, the, the development of DVT for our, cli um, for our clients as part of our um, evidence-based practices, we follow the international accreditation guidelines. We make solid practices and to put into practice. We educate staff, clients, and families. We comply to the rules and implement open communication. Um, um, I, I'm also uh, including that we have an open communication with our doctors. Aside from the supervisors who is directly calling our doctors, our nurses have this open communication to our doctors to call anytime if the patient is developing um, VTE or any signs of VTE or if the doctors forget to order for VTE prophylaxis. We monitor the compliance and keep opportunities and uh, indicators for quality improvement and all this to improve our services for quality care and to maintain patient safety. Thank you so much.